Hi, everybody. My name is Stephanie, and I'm an Enterprise Customer Success Manager with Jotform. Thank you all for joining me in another installment of our Lunch and Learn series. Today, we will be going over the difference between users and respondents, as well as some newer additions to the admin console. Before we dive in, I wanted to let you know that the enterprise server we're working in today is not HIPAA enabled. If you have any questions regarding HIPAA enabled servers, please reach out to our enterprise support team. As per usual, we're going to be covering a lot in this video, so it is being recorded and we will reserve some time towards the end of the presentation for questions. Are our topics. During our time together, we will first look at some new additions and updates to our admin console. This includes a list of widgets and payment integrations that can be made available by the server admin and the admin console. A system logs tool, which displays sent emails and integrations added to forms, and a look at some user update options. After that, we will discuss the difference between a server user, a form respondent, and when a form respondent becomes a guest user. There is some intersection between these types of users that I hope to clear up today. All right, and I'm going to switch over to the new features and customization options. Um, so. If you are the admin of your server, most of these settings will look familiar to you, but our newest addition to the admin console is the form builder customization area. Um, starting with the payment integrations, when all of these options are checked, your licensed users will have access to add any of these integrations to forms that they build. They would just need to have an account with a third party payment provider to log in and authorize the payment integration if they decide to use it in the form builder. Um, this section is useful if you want your if your organization has a business account with a specific payment provider and you only want that one to be visible in the form builder to your users. Um, so you can select and deselect all of these and you can turn this on and off. If you do turn this off, this is what it looks like in the form builder. It's just gone from the form builder. Um, the next form builder customization option is our widgets. Um, similarly to the payment integrations, you can select which ones are visible and you can turn this on and off. Oops. This is what it looks like when there's no widgets on the form. Um, this might be useful if you want to maintain a uniform look to your forms or if you'd like to restrict your license users from using a widget where your organization does not have an account to authorize it. Some of the widgets do require an account and authorization, such as DocuSign or Zuko Form Analytics and some other ones. And this is just an example of one of the widgets that needs an authentication, and these two as well. Um, so that's pretty much it for the Form Builder customization. Uh, the next new feature I'm going to go over is our system logs tool. So this is the system logs. Um, with this tool, you can view the notification and autoresponder emails that were sent out within a month on your individual forms. Uh, you can search by form name or pretty much any information in the email, like the email address, and go back you know, one day, seven days, the previous month. Um, you can search by users. Um, or status. And even though it says notification on the email, this will show regular notification emails, autoresponder emails, and invitation emails. Um, so this tool is useful if a member of your team thinks they haven't received an e email notification or if an applicant can't find an autoresponder email, you can check here if it was sent out. Um, the next part of this tool is the integrations. Um, if you have any integration set up on the form, like Google Sheets, uh, Salesforce, Google Drive, um, those are basically activated once a submission comes through, and you can check here if these have been successful. So I have Google Sheets integration set up on this form, and I can see here that it worked and no failures. All right. Um, Another, not really an update, but something you might not have noticed is that we used to have an option to change a licensed user's password 
Uh, we recently removed that for security reasons, but if a user forgets their password, they can still use the forgot password link at the server login page to retrieve it. And these are the current editing options. You can change the name, the email, username, title, user type, and you can lock and unlock their account. So pretty much everything's the same, except that you can no longer change their password in this user menu. Um, just so you know, uh, the user form is going to list all of the licensed users. And we also have this Teams tab. This is also only going to include licensed users. And you can manage the users here from the Manage Members area. We do have a recent Lunch and Learn on, specifically on managing users and teams from March 30th that you can check out if you'd like to know more about that. All right, uh, switching over from the new admin console features to form assignments. Um, so assigning forms, um, this is, we have a regular quick share area, and then you can assign forms from this tab here. Um, if you're assigning a respondent to a form, you can either use this public link or you can assign through email. Um, once the, uh, when you assign through email, they will receive an email invitation to sign up. And once they create those login credentials, that will actually generate a guest user account for them. So that's kind of the difference between a guest user and a licensed user. Um, when you are assigning these forms, we have the general permissions options here, submit only, submit and view later, submit and edit later. You might wanna start with the most options here, and then you can give individual separate permissions for each person that you invite. Um, you will also be able to see when they join, when they last submitted, um, and if they haven't joined yet. You can also uh, revoke the user if you'd like to remove their access to filling out the form and they will see an error message once you've revoked it. Um, just to give you some visualization on this, this is what the invitation email looks like. This is what it looks like when they go to sign up for their guest account. It copies their email that you use for the invitation. Um, and this is what it looks like when they're filling the form out. And they are, at this point, logged into their guest account, and this is their menu. And once they fully log in and they fill out the form, they'll be able to see what they filled out here. And since they have the edit option on the permissions, you can actually go in and edit the form and resubmit it. Um, now that they have guest login credentials, they can actually also use those to log into our App Store Enterprise app. Start this from the beginning. This is what it looks like when they log into the Enterprise app. Pretty much all the same features, but optimized for a smaller screen. They can check their inbox, what they've already filled out. They can submit. Um, this works online and offline. If the admin has set the form to be offline enabled. All right, um, so we covered a lot in today's session. Uh, some key takeaways from today's discussion are new custom options to control which widgets and payment integrations are visible to users building the forms, new system logs to track notification emails and triggered integrations, um, how a guest user account is created and what they can do with their account, tracking status of assigned guest users, how a guest user can log in and navigate the enterprise app. If assigning forms to respondents is useful to your organization, please give it a try and check if it will further improve efficiency of your process. And if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat or the QA if you have not already. I do see some questions in here. Um, 
and you change the job form logo on invite. I will follow up with you on that. I believe it is showing, let me just double check the logo of the, this one. Yeah, it should be showing your server logo, but I can follow up with you on that because this is the job from server logo. Um, next question is, is there a limit to the number of guest users for an enterprise account? Um, no, there isn't a limit to the number of guest users as far as I'm aware at this point. Um, I also had a pre-made question that some of you might be wondering about. Um, can a licensed user also have a guest user account? And they can. It's a good idea to do that when testing a form, but I recommend using a different email address to separate that guest account from your licensed user account so you can test it and see exactly what the guests would see. I see another question. I would like to know the process, the progress of pre-fill data being sent to signed documents, or is there going to be a push with the signed features being part of the forms? Um, that would be a feature request. Um, I'm not sure what the status would be. I'm sure we have plenty of feature requests currently in for that feature, but at the moment, um, I don't believe there is an ETA on that kind of a feature pre-fill into signed documents. Did I miss anything here? Okay. Um, marketing team, are there any more questions that I missed? Uh, nothing from the YouTube side, so you should be good to go. Okay, great. Um, thanks again for being here with me today. This is the last installment of our Lunch and Learn series for this spring. Stay tuned for Lunch and Learn series two coming up this summer. If you have any questions that we didn't get to today, please reach out to our enterprise sales team or our customer support team if you're already an enterprise user. Um, you can find more Lunch and Learns webinars, walkthroughs, and quick video guides also on our YouTube channel on our website. Put that up on the screen here. Um, we'll have some great Lunch and Learn sessions coming up that will build upon each other. So please ensure that you're registered for these at this website listed on the screen, dropform.com slash enterprise slash Lunch and Learn sessions.